What is up you guys, you're watching Search Your Secret. Before I get started with today's video, if you can please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe button, I'm trying to reach to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Hopefully we can make it. If not, we will definitely beat it at the beginning of January. But I would love, love, love to be at 40,000 subscribers. So please go ahead and subscribe. It would mean a lot. Give this video a thumbs up. And also all the links for everything will be down below. A lot of designer sales like the YSL, the Balenciaga Burberry sale have started and they are exclusive links. So they will be down in the description box if you want to check them out. And let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So today's video, guys, is going to be basic designer handbags. We're going to be talking about the top seven basic designer handbags, particularly under the $2,000 price point. Now, this be, might be a controversial opinion, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Some people think like a Chanel flat bag is basic, a Hermes Birkin is basic, a Dior book tote is basic. Um, even though I do agree that those handbags are common with the other bags that are out in the market. So I know I have seen many YouTube videos where saying, well, I don't feel special carrying a flat bag or whatever. Yes, it's a very popular bag, but me living in the, in the middle of everything here in Dallas, I really don't see a lot of flat bags, believe it or not. I don't really see a lot of Birkins. I may see two or three Birkins a day, but then I'll see like 100 Neverfulls, if you know what I mean. So I just wanted to make that kind of clear for super basic bags, because in my opinion, I feel like they're not. I just wanted to say that I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions about that, controversial opinion or not. Designer handbags, particularly under the $2,000 price point that are in the designer categories that tend to be the most popular handbags that people have, that have on YouTube, that people have on social media. And I also wanted to say, just because a handbag is popular in social media doesn't mean you see it in real life. To say things that you see on social media isn't reality. So if your favorite blogger has like 10 book totes, 10 Bottega Veneta handbags, 10 Marc Jacobs bags, 50, you know, Louis Vuitton bags, that's not reality. Um, that's your job, that's your profession, and that's not something that you should ever feel that you have to compete with or that you have to feel like you have to have. I feel for the longest I did that as well where I felt like I needed to have all these things in order to make myself feel better and spending thousands and thousands of dollars on designer items where you know now you know I do have like a lot of those purchases. I do like a lot of them. I did sell quite a bit of items but never really see designer items or fashion in general as that. I really curate my style and my tasting and yes i will reference you know uh bloggers um celebrities and stuff like that for fashion inspiration but i won't be um like i have to have absolutely every everything i think i want my things to be a little bit more refined i'll be talking about the 10 top basic bags and by basic i don't think basic is a bad word everybody needs basic items in their collection their basic white t-shirts their basic jeans some of their go-to basic handbags so I think that there's nothing wrong with having basic or classic handbags because I have a few of these in my collection and they serve a purpose. So it tries to put you down on a purchase. Um, at the end of the day, it's your money. You worked hard for it. Well, the first handbag that we're going to be talking about is the Gucci Marmont collection. I've had a few Gucci Marmonts throughout the years. I had a Gucci camera bag and I had the Gucci Velvet Marmont. Personally, I talked about this before in a previous video. I personally think that I would buy Gucci Marmont to fit in. That's what I'm saying. Like, I would buy things just to feel like I could feel like, oh, I have a Gucci Marmont bag. I would buy it for the wrong reasons and I would wear it for the wrong reasons. And now that I'm a little bit more mature, now that I'm, you know, growing up a little bit, I see that, you know, when I reference that, I that's not really, really me. And I don't really care for the marmont collection um just because i feel like i would buy it just to say that i have it I just don't care for the shade of gold that the gg is in and i also made a video about the gucci marmont camera bag review link down below i didn't give it the best review it didn't wear really really nicely over time there are other bags that i would prefer i would prefer saint laurent bags which is something we'll be talking about later but gucci marmont collection i'm not a fan of i really don't care for it um, but yeah, that's my opinion. I'm gonna say the Gucci Marmont is a skip for me. The second handbag is going to be the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. So this is a Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Damier and You're gonna be like, Sergio, you have a Louis Vuitton Neverfull? No, this is my friend's bag. We, I was taking it to get cleaned up for her and I just picked it up a couple days ago. So I have it here. And so this is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull under the ring lights and everything. And now that I see this bag, she has like a little pretty bandeau on it. I care for the Neverfull for myself, 
but I actually do like the Neverfull in general. I think the Neverfull, because like I was thinking about what compares better than a mommy bag, a school bag that's designer that will hold up over a longer period of time. Let's have this honest conversation. The YSO tote doesn't hold up over time. Boyard tote doesn't hold up over time. All these other designer totes over time don't really hold up as much as the Louis Vuitton Neverfull as a tote. So therefore, there is nothing like this in the market um, as far as the durability of this handbag. Like, I wouldn't buy one right now in 2020, but I can see why people love this bag. I can see why people use it. I can really see the value in this handbag. I think it's a really great toe. Like I said, when you compare it to other brands in this price point or even a little bit less or a little bit more, there's not a lot of options and I, and I felt like if brands really did like a nice coated canvas toe or a nice classic toe that will stay in their current line because other brands like Burberry have tried to do their kind of classic toe but then discontinue it after a year. If they had a classic toe that would be, remain the same or get modified very slightly throughout the years, it would, it would stay eventually. But the Louis Vuitton has never really been modified other than the this one now has a pouch that whenever you purchase it with, like it's it's gone actually better. At the end of the day, I do think that the Neverfull is worth it. I do like it. I, I see the purpose and I see why people love it. And like I said, I wouldn't buy one for myself, but I see why people love it. So I'm going to give the Neverfull an actual yes for me. My bag is going to be the YSL camera bag. See, that's why I said about I was going to reference uh, YSL versus the Marmot. I feel like if you do want that kind of statement -y, you know, you want that metal piece, you want something that's nice, I prefer for the Saint Laurent camera bag. I feel like it's a little bit different. Yes, it's a popular handbag, but a lot of people don't have it like the Gucci Marmot. I feel like this one holds up really well. I like the size of it. I don't like how the Marmot kind of curves in a little bit, particularly on the large one. I like how square it is. It's very squishy. You can definitely pack and put whatever you need to put in here. I like the little tassel detail on it. I like the adjustment on the strap. Because the Gucci Marmont, you can't really adjust the strap. The zipper, I like how there's a pocket. This one, I just recently added into my collection a couple weeks back. And it's been holding up pretty well. I like it a lot. I'm going to give the St. Laurent a yes for me. I do think that this is a nice bag. I do think it's worth it. And if you're looking for a nice everyday crossbody that fits a little bit more, I feel like this one's a really great option regardless of the colorway or the color choice that you decide to purchase it in. This bag is going to be the Gucci Soho Disco. I'm going to give this one a yes. I do like the Gucci Soho Disco. I wouldn't buy it for myself now because I have the Saint Laurent camera bag and I feel like they're very similar. I like how the GG is stitched in and it's not a metal so I feel like everything looks super seamless. I like the tassel on the handbag. I like the length of the handbag. Now I hear that that they're trying to kind of discontinue this bag slowly but since it's such a popular bag they always have it so whenever you go into the store at the Gucci store you never actually see it like on a display or anything they always put it in drawers just because it's still a popular bag so that's why they carry it and I feel like the moment it maybe has like a little bit of a decrease in popularity that handbag will get discontinued but I know it came in brown black and red they discontinued the red color so now it only comes in the brown and black as you see they don't really do any colorways throughout the season like I said that's kind of like they only have it because it's a popular bag like if it wasn't popular that bag would have gotten discontinued like the rest of the Soho line I still think that the Gucci Soho is a very nice bag I think it's a very timeless bag I feel like you can have right now if you were to buy it in 2020 you got it for Christmas and in 2025 and 2030 I still feel like the just because the silhouette and the way the bag is I feel like it will still be relevant and you can still pull it out of your closet. So I do think that the Gucci Soho Disco is worth your money and it is worth your time if you're interested in that handbag. Next one is going to be the Louis Vuitton Speed. about the bandolier and the regular Speedy, just all in one. Now, me, now that I live in a city, I feel like I would get the bandolier version just because when I carry things from my car to my building, I have, you know, I have 50 million things and carrying a top handle isn't really practical a lot a lot and depending where i'm going but for most days i kind of like to have the extra strap on it and when i was younger or even like six months ago i'd be like no i like the top handle i like the top handle you know i do have handbags that have top handle but that strap really makes a big difference so i would probably go for the bandolier versions versus the regular i like the louis vuitton speedy i prefer them under 35 i know the louis vuitton monogram comes in 40 i probably wouldn't get the 40 i think 30 to 35 would be like a size that i would get 
I would stay away from the Damier Azur. I would probably go for the Abinin or the Classic Monogram. I still think that the Speedy is a very classic handbag. I respect this hint out so long and I do think it's ultimately a classic. It's still a popular handbag. And even though, like I said, I don't care for Louis Vuitton at all, I can still give props and I can still recommend handbags. My thoughts are of the brand, so Louis Vuitton Speedy. Uh, yes, I do think it's a really great bag. I do think it's worth your money. And I would say, honestly, go for it. Basic handbag is going to be the Prada Nylon reissue or the leather version. Just any of this kind of pushette style by Prada. Now, I know this bag hasn't really been out since it's got reissued, but I really see this bag sticking with Prada now in the new social media age, how popular it's been online. I do see this bag sticking around for the next couple of years. I honestly feel like it's going to be their new classic. I like their kind of like classic Safiano tote. It's going to be like one of those where this is going to stay. bought this last year in the end of January, early February. Pretty great price after the VAT or everything, but it's worn up really well. I have nothing wrong to say about this bag. I think that this is probably one of my top um, three favorite bags in this video. It has a little product pack. It's lined on the inside. It's just such an overall good bag just to have in your collection. I feel like I would never sell this because this is always a nice bag that I can always reference and that I can always have. I like the little pouch here because I can put my cards inside. Like I said, they be, keep coming out with different styles, silhouettes. They have like a bejeweled one, all the different colored nylons, all the different colored leather ones. So I feel like if you do want a Prada nylon bag or Prada reissue, I think it's worth your money and especially since it hasn't been out that long this bag is just going to keep on having price increases so i would say kind of buy it sooner than later because i remember when i when this bag came out like a year ago i believe it was like a thousand one hundred and fifty dollars and now it's a thousand four hundred dollars for this handbag so I, I have a feeling by the end of next year this will probably be 1550 for this prada handbag so i would say just if you want the bag I would honestly go for it. I do think it's worth it and this is going to stick around in the versatility and the usage of this bag are really endless. You can really make this bag what you want it to be. So the Prada Nylon for me is a definitely yes in this basic bag. I highly, highly, highly recommend. It's probably, like I said, one of my top three or if not my most favorite handbag. The handbag is going to be the Saint Laurent Lulu bag. This one's right here. I had this one earlier this year. I actually really like this bag, but I bought it in a pink color and I just never ended up purchasing it in another color. But what I like about this bag is that you can actually make this a wristlet. You can carry it as a clutch. It's really easy to travel with because it's very puffy. You just put kind of stuff inside and it's an easy bag to travel with. I think the price point is really well. They come in different colors and variations. I do really like the Lulu collection, just it, regardless of the crossbody or even like the larger sizes. I like the puffiness of the Lulu and I like the style and the silhouette and I still see this bag still being around and still being sold in the next couple of years. I would say yes to the Lulu. I do think the Lulu is definitely worth your money. The next bag is going to be the Saint Laurent Tote. And I know they kind of redid this now where it has kind of like the little buckles on it. So I feel like it's a little bit more reinforced and with like a little bit more durable leather. I still have seen this newer version and I feel like it doesn't hold up. I don't think it's worth your money. That's what I mean. Like so many other brands have been trying to do kind of like the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. And it just doesn't work out for them. Saint Laurent, I know how people have been comparing them. But the Saint Laurent handbag, that tote, does not hold up over time. It actually looks really bad. Like, it, it, when, especially when you carry a laptop, you carry paperwork. Just the way you hold the handles and the leather, since it's a very thin and soft leather, it just doesn't look good. And I really wouldn't recommend this bag. And every time I see this bag on pre-love websites, if it's not in new condition or like brand new, it looks really bad. It doesn't wear over nice. I don't think this one's worth your money. I think there are so many other nice totes that are out there um, in different price points and different categories. But I would, honestly, guys, I would stay away from you purchasing the YSL toe. I don't think it's worth your money. I want you to spend your money on something else that's more worth it. But I don't think that the Saint Laurent toe is worth your money. I made a video about handbags to never buy. I'll leave that video link down below. But I talked about the toe and I showed pictures and everything. Uh, why I don't really think this handbag is worth it. I've been getting asked, what do I think of the newer version? I've seen the newer version in store. I still don't recommend it. I still don't care for it. And it would, I think for me, what would make me like the bag if it had maybe a thicker handle 
and it also the inside they kind of take that little microfiber kind of suede interior and put a leather interior on the inside so it makes it a lot more durable and easier because if something happens you can just wipe it off but in that little suede ones especially in the original ones those creases and those little marks would stay in the bag and that would drive me insane and nuts um so i would just I just don't think it's a great one. If you have this toe, I would love to hear your thoughts on your paints. Like, I would really, really love to hear it because I've really heard nothing but negative things about this bag. The last handbag on my list are going to be the Chloe Marcy collection. So we talked about Chloe Marcy. Here she is in all her beauty. She comes in a lot of different sizes. They have like a mini one, a mini top handle, a medium, a large, and they've done it throughout many different variations throughout the years. I will say it kind of changed my style. The Chloe Marcy is growing on me, particularly in the nude color. I would probably grab the chestnut color if I were to pick one. I think before I said I would grab the cashmere gray color, um, which is this color right here. But I've really been into the tan one and I feel like I would use that little crossbody so much. I love the color. I wear a lot of neutral colors and I feel like me not having a black bag but still having a neutral color. I think that tan will be a really great addition to have in my collection. I think it will look really great. That's something that I see myself adding in the near future. But I do think that the Chloe Marcy is a very seamless bag. I, this one's very for the low key. If you don't want something very low key, something that doesn't scream designer or something that doesn't scream in your face, I think that Chloe Marcy has been out for about 11 years now. It will never go out of style. It's one of the, their consistent bestseller. I know they've done so many different styles throughout the years, like the Drew, um, the Faye, um, Test Bag. Marcy still remains their number one bestseller. So I feel like this one's a really great investment. You can actually get a really great deal on the pre-love market. Fashion Files is my favorite pre-love website. You can find really great deals on the Chloe Marcy. That's probably what I'll end up buying mine if I end up not finding it at last call. I'll probably end up buying it there and I'll probably get it for about half off or maybe like 40% off. So, but I do think that the Chloe Marcy is probably in my Marcy is definitely the one that's going to be on my wish list next. Basic handbags that are, a lot of people have that are very common in people's collections and I gave you kind of my opinions. I really liked all of them. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Like I said, I would probably just stay away from the Marmont collection. I, like I said, I feel like it gave me a bad taste in my mouth and that's probably why I don't care for it. And the St. Laurent toe, I just honestly don't think that's worth the money. I don't really think that's worth the money. I think your money is better spent anywhere else or any of the other bags on the list. Other than those two bag guys, I really like all the other ones. Other bags that I didn't really talk about in the today's list are like the St. Laurent Kate collection. Oh, I freaking love the St. Laurent wallet on chain. I like, I would prefer the smaller version versus the larger one because the smaller one has like a little bit of a gusset and the larger one is very narrow so you can't fit a lot so i'd probably recommend the larger one but i do like it i do like the louis vuitton alma particularly i would feel like the monogram looks the best and i like the pachetta on the bottom i do like a lot of the bags i do like the chanel wallet on chain as well that's kind of another basic bag that kind of like a lot of people talk about but i really don't have anything wrong with basic bags i know i always get opinions what are my thoughts what are my opinions do you hate the neverfull because i know like a lot of people you know once they kind of build a collection of handbag they like to really look down upon or really talk a lot of mess about a louis vuitton neverfull or like all these other bags and for me i really don't care what you wear you know i like to wear contemporary handbags designer handbags even a bag from the market or my lululemon shopper bag like i'll wear that and i'll call it a day but i would say just do you buy whatever you want whatever makes you happy whatever puts a smile on your face just don't buy things for the wrong reasons make sure whatever you buy you genuinely like and you'll get a lot of wear out of other than that, do you too short to think about what other people think about you. So yeah, guys, I'll leave the links for everything down below. I'll put pre-love versions of all the videos here. And like I said, all the designer sales have started, so I have a lot of the private links. So check them down down below. I'm posting a video every single day about our Vlogmas, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss any one of my uploads. Love you, love you, love you. Muchísimo con todo mi corazón. And I'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. Bye, guys, and take care.